Guys, I recently finished a book and it is now in the running for my favorite book of all time. This is big. Deep breaths. Hey, beautiful people of the internet. My name is Ryan. The name of this book is Giovanni's Room, and the name of the guy who wrote it is James Baldwin. Two of those three names you're going to need to remember until the day that you die. And the third one, well, you can forget my name as soon as the video is over, honestly. But you cannot forget to make sure to watch to the end of the video to see who won those two free tote bags from Out of Print Clothing. But before that, a book review coming to you in three parts. The basics about the book, my personal experience with it, and should you read it. Disclaimer, as always, this video contains no spoilers. Okay, so the basics. Giovanni's Room was published in 1956. It's about 150-ish pages long. It's straightforward prose, a really easy read. Like some of the best American fiction, it's about an American expatriate in Paris, which is what James Baldwin was. Baldwin was an African-American writer. He was extremely prolific and influential. You may have heard of his books, uh, the novel Go Tell It on the Mountain, his essays, Notes of a Native Son, and the only one that I've read, his collection of short stories, Going to Meet the Man. The entire plot of Giovanni's Room is this. The narrator, David, is a young American alone in France on the night before what he says will be the most terrible morning of his life. He tells the story of what brought him to that point. For those of you lit nerds playing along at home, that's a frame narrative. And the thing that brought him to that point is a love triangle, although with a little bit of a twist. David proposes to his girlfriend, Hella, who, because she needs time to think about it, goes to Spain, and while she is away, he has an affair with an Italian young man named Giovanni. Giovanni's room is the story of that complicated love affair and the struggle with identity that happens when you're not okay with a central part of yourself. Okay, but hold up, because the problem is that everything that I just said does not begin to cover the specialness of this book. Giovanni's Room was instantly controversial because I'm not sure if you caught that or not. 1956, black author and gay or bisexual romance. Baldwin's publisher's first response to this book was to tell him to burn it. A little bit more on the controversy of this book later. Okay, my personal experience with the book, it's a little bit of a long story, but I think that it's worth it. I think about this book in three ways. The first is that I was assigned to read this book for class uh, in the creative writing program that I'm in. Literally, this is one of the textbooks. In that regard, it is simply one of the best pieces of writing that I have ever read. I would show you my annotations, the places where I noticed all of the cool technical and craft-minded things uh, that Baldwin was doing but I cannot because I had those reactions sure but I also rode the emotional roller coaster all over this book and and I just don't feel comfortable showing you uh, what I the things the parts of me that I leaked onto the page yeah so on a technical creative writing level it's solid sure but what about the book as a book did I not just say that I rode an emotional roller coaster all over I would not be reviewing this book if I did not think that it was an amazing book in its own right. Giovanni's Room is very nearly my favorite book of all time, uh, and I finished it 14 days ago. It's a book about identity and struggling with parts of yourself. It's a book about home and about leaving. It's a book about Americanness. Okay, so it's good as a technical piece of writing. It's good as a book. And now, third time for an imagination exercise. It's 1956. You are James Baldwin, a writer whose career is just starting to take off. You are an American and you are a black man. You are gay, but the world does not know that. Because it's the 1950s, you are a Negro writer or a black writer who writes about the Negro experience. Okay, keeping all of that in mind, the expectation of you, of James Baldwin, is to write only black characters because you have a niche and to hide your sexuality, to bury it so far down that not a peep of it shows through your fiction. So let me be clear, that would hypothetically be an okay thing to do. It would be a brave and an ethical thing to do. America needed to reckon with the black voices that had been silenced, but that is not what James Baldwin did. Because he is a bigger badass than you or I will ever be, he does something else. He writes a different silenced voice the silenced gay or bisexual voice. He writes Giovanni's Room, which is a great piece of writing and a great book, and also which features zero black characters and a homosexual relationship at the very center of the book. It's important because it made, and it still makes, readers break down their mental images of what fits inside the box of literature and inside the boxes of African American literature and LGBT literature. It makes readers think about why those distinctions might exist 
and about who holds the power of deciding what goes in each box. Okay, yeah, but should I read it? There are literally no reasons for not reading this book. Books like Infinite Jest and some of Franzen's works, I get it, maybe they're a little too long, a little bit too experimental for you, but I can think of literally zero reasons for not reading this book. You have no excuses, it's 150 pages. Giovanni's Room is also an excellent example of something that I think it's important to talk about here on BookTube. Okay, to vastly oversimplify here, if a book is well written, if a book is a good story, and if a book is important, those are three different evaluations for a book's goodness. Different readers have varying levels of connection to those three categories, and that changes over time. Giovanni's Room by James Baldwin just happens to be off the charts on all three. Can you tell by now that I was really, really moved by this book? Alrighty, that's all I've got for the book review, and now, as if this day could not get any better, I get to give free stuff to you guys. This is maybe my favorite part about doing YouTube, let's be honest. The winner of the Great Gatsby tote bag, picked using a random generator, is Kate Mayberry. And the winner of the Punk Rock tote bag is your robot friend. Congrats to both of you guys, I will be sending both of these in the mail to you ASAP. And thank you, Out of Print Clothing. Thanks to everybody who played along. I loved reading your comments. If you liked what you saw here today and you want to see more of it, there is a red subscribe button down below. That's all I've got. I will see you all next week. Best wishes. Okay, Fortune Smiles by Adam Johnson. Three things. One, the story of the book. Two, the stories in the book. And three, should you read the book? P.S. The user who won the punk rocker tote bag, your robot friend, uh, is also a booktuber. I know this because she commented on an old video of mine, the Infinite Jest book review, and so I went and checked out her Infinite Jest book review, and it is a good one. I am going to link her channel below, because, like, the world is better with more good booktube out there. So, see ya!